podcast. My name is Austin Felzer, and this is episode seven. Uh, sorry for it being so late uh, this week, uh, but a bunch of logistics got in my way and kept me from the recording team. So I, I apologize for the late episode. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with Austin Media Podcast, this is a short form podcast discussing everything entertainment. Uh, this is movies, video games, technology, TV, music, and much more. Um, but before we get into all that, I want to set some time to thank some of my patrons. Uh, first, uh, Thomas Stoneham Judge. Uh, he, his Twitter and Instagram is at being TSJ, and he operates the website uh, MoviesForReal.net. Uh, additionally, I would like to thank Shane Tonto. You can see his work on his YouTube channel, uh, known as The Wasteland Reviewer, uh, Sif Pop as Shane Tonto, and among any others. Um, I would also like to thank Joseph Davis. You can also find his work on Sif Pop, uh, as well as Dave Walters and Beulah Beulah, Matthew Simpson of Awesome Friday. In fact, I actually, uh, I'll drop a link in uh, the description, but I actually uh, just contributed to my MCU rankings to his podcast and what my number one uh, MCU ranking is. So I'll drop um, e- either both episodes or d- it depends on when this goes up. So y- y- you'll have all the episodes. But um, let's see. Oh, and I have a new patron, Tom Blackburn. Uh, so thank you, Tom. Um, I-, I really appreciate your support. Um, for those who don't know how to support me, uh, you you can become a patron at patreon.com slash austinbmedia or austinb.media slash support. And you, that gives you all the information you need. I've got donation portals. Um, it could be one time. Uh, you could buy me a coffee. Um, all that will be on the austinb.media slash support page. Um, so I, we've got a lot to talk about, especially in the realm of movies, uh, television, and games. So let's just get into it. Um, so let's see, what do we want to talk about? I wa- rewatched a few movies, one of which was This is the End, um, which I didn't realize I don't remember as well uh, as I did. It, for those who aren't familiar, This is the End is a Seth Rogen, James Franco, and a whole bunch of famous Hollywood people joint, um, where it's the end of the world and Jay Baruchel and friends and James Franco, Craig Robinson, and a few of uh, Seth Rogen's friends are in Hollywood experiencing the apocalypse. Um, I don't think I liked it my first time watching it back in 2013, I believe is when it came out. Um, But I much more, I appreciated it much more this time around. Um, Just because I think I was in the mood. I think when I watched it originally, um, I was just, oh, another Seth Rogen movie, or, or, oh, another James Franco movie. But I think I've come to the age where I've started to realize, uh, hey, trashy movies are okay, too. Just not Moonfall. Moonfall, I can't excuse. Um, But yeah, I I really liked it. It's really funny. It's got a lot of in-jokes. I wish they had gone a little harder on James Franco for uh, the new Goblin thing in uh, Spider-Man 3. But uh, I think it was so close to Spider-Man 3 that it, you know, what are you going to do? So, um, it's all overall a solid film. Uh, you could stream that on Stars. I think I'll have a um, little link in there somewhere. Um, one of the one times I've actually used my Stars subscription. But, hey, if I'm using it, okay. Uh, and then I watched Elvis. Uh, let's see, Elvis was as if Cocaine uh, directed a movie. You start the movie on the super high high, oh my goodness, this is Elvis. Goodness, what, what, it, what, how awesome is it that I'm experiencing Elvis right now? But then as you get, um, as the run, run time goes on and on and on, um, it tends to kind of, especially in the third act, just kind of fall apart, especially with Tom Hanks um, and some of the things that go on in the third act that I won't spoil. But I will say 
that it is a Baz Luhrmann film through and through. So if you're expecting stuff like, uh, I think uh, an apt comparison would be Romeo and Juliet. Um, that seems like the most, the closest analog to what he's doing here. Um, so yeah, I I, I, I I don't recommend it necessarily, um, but you know it, it, it is what it is. It, um, I like it for what it is. Uh, if you don't know who Elvis is, I think you're gonna have a hard time um, making your way through this movie. Um, but so it might you might have to rewatch it a few times and maybe do some outside research for Elvis. But other than that, I, I, I think it was a pretty solid film. I think I rated it three out of five on uh, Letterboxd, which I'll have my link to in the show notes. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was glad to see it. Um, but uh, it, it, it's not going to be in my top five. I'll, I'll just say that. Um, but what might make it to my top five in the uh, end of the year, I don't know actually where it's placed right now, uh, but don't make me go. This uh, streaming on Amazon Prime over the weekend. Uh, it came out on Friday. Um, it was one of the films I watched on Friday um, as I took a day off. Um, one of two days off, actually, um, because I was just kind of feeling like I needed a breather day. Um, and it is John Cho and an, an actress I don't know. Um, John Cho is sick, and he wants to have a road trip with his daughter. Um, uh, he plays, uh, I believe his name is Max, and his daughter's name is Wally. He has a terminal um, uh, illness, and he just wants to have one final uh, trip before he hits the bucket, so to speak. I don't think that's any spoilers. I think it's right in the Amazon Prime uh, video, or I'm sorry, Prime video. Um, description page, uh, but I, I liked it. It's got a, a, an unexpected amount of humor um, because for, yeah, it's just unexpected, and it's so stylish um, that I think a lot of people will kind of look past the, oh, hey, this is about somebody who's dying. Uh, look over those m more dramatic elements and see if really enjoy it, uh, because I think it's one of the most genuine films of the year. I think it's a movie that comes out of a place of love and hurt and understanding. Um, I think I put, I, I don't know if I reviewed this on Letterboxd, but if I do, uh, my link will be in the description uh, with the show notes. Um, something I did review on Letterboxd was After Yang. Uh, this is on Showtime. I, I also believe you can rent it, uh, but I saw it on Showtime because that's basically where anyone watches A24 movies. Uh, this has Colin Farrell, Jody Comer-Smith, uh, a bunch of uh, uh, big names, Clifford Collins Jr., uh, Haley Lou Richardson, um, and it's about this, I, I, what do they call it? Techno, techno sapiens. Yang is a techno sapien, and it's about... Um, I. I you know, I've watched so many movies, these character names are starting to run together, but um, Colin Farrell's character uh, is investigating the memories of Yang, and it's all about that. I've never seen a Koganada film. Uh, I didn't see Columbus, and I haven't seen the episodes of Pachinko, uh, the Apple TV Plus show that he directed. Uh, I think he's directed episodes one through four. Um, I haven't seen any of that, um, but I, I, I loved it. Well, okay, loved it is a strong word. I, I liked it enough to give it a four out of five on Letterboxd. Um, the main thing that kept it uh, from a five out of five for me is it's over long. Um, the pacing is just rubber banding uh, back and forth. Back Sometimes you'll be blazing uh, towards the finish line, and sometimes you'll just be crawling towards it. Um, in the story, um, but otherwise, this is a well-acted film. Uh, I think definitely people should check it out. Um, I think for the people who have recommended it to me over the past few months, I don't, it, let's see, when did it come out? I think January or something like that. Um, I understand it 
um, because it's one of those moody, contemplative films. And I think if you enjoy that, I think you'll enjoy this film. Um, and I also, in addition to This is the End, I rewatched The Batman uh, a couple nights ago. Um, that was okay. Uh, definitely went down a little bit. It's not a 5 out of 5 for me. It's more of a 4.5 out of 5 for me. Um, because while I like the Batman, it's three hour, almost three hour. It's two hours and 56 minutes. Um, the, the runtime really eats into the whole experience of it. When you're captive in a movie theater, I think the Batman, by the way, I, I reviewed it. I'll include my review in the uh, show notes. Um, it, it, it just, when you're sitting on a couch for three hours, you're like checking your phone, being like, okay, do, do I have, do, what do I have on Twitter? Uh, do I have anything else I could be doing? It just, for someone who has anxiety like I do, not a great movie to be watching at home. I'd actually be interested to hear from you. Um, what did you think of the Batman if you watched it on HBO Max first? And um, just tell me what that experience was like. I, I, I'd be very curious. Um, I think there's a Spotify poll somewhere around here on the episode show notes. Um, so go vote in that. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I, I liked everything else about the film. The Riddler still works. Paul Dano's performance as the Riddler still works. A lot of the performances still work. Um, I, I will say the greatest detective aspect of it starts to work a little less for me when you know where the movie's going. Uh, so it also uh, hits itself over the head on a rewatch. So uh, beware for that. Uh, but you can watch the Batman on HBO Max. You can buy it. You can rent it. Uh, it it's available pretty much everywhere. Um, but uh, getting on to TV, I watched uh, For All Mankind Season 3, Episode 6. Um, I will try not to give spoilers, but uh, so I'll just kind of skirt around things that happened this week. Um, but For All, My, I, For All Mankind's episode this week was very um, lackluster. It got into too many of the politics of what the show is. And I think... What I like about For All Mankind is it takes, you know, it's science fiction, and it kind of, I don't know, got too much into science reality, um, especially with the James Webb uh, telescope pictures uh, that have been happening over the last week. Um, and it just hit a little too close to home for me, uh, some of the uh, topics on there. So I was just... Um, it, it wasn't my cup of tea, uh, to reuse a metaphor from uh, my After Yang review. Um, Miss uh, Marvel wrapped up its first season, and what I assume I will, I assume it'll have a second season, um, because it did so well. Um, I think um, I don't think Disney Plus has released those numbers, but I really enjoyed Miss Marvel. Um, as I said last week, it's this fresh. Fresh, this breath of fresh air into the Marvel Cinematic Universe that I think was long needed. Um, and I think um, the creative team at Marvel Studios could take a few notes on what worked in Miss Marvel and what hasn't worked in Thor Love and Thunder. Um, I, not that I've seen it. Um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and all the other Phase 4 films that just didn't click. Like, I liked the Turtles, but there's just a few things that just didn't click for me in that movie. Uh, oh, Black Widow. That's another one. But I, I, I feel like um, Marvel could learn a few things from the show, uh, particularly how in this origin story, it ties so heavily into who Kamala Khan is as a person uh, and what her family's history is. So that's all I'll say about that without getting into spoilers. Uh, let me know if you'd like me to do a spoiler uh, cast on that. I'd be, I'd be very interested uh, in, letting, uh, in you letting me, me know uh, what your thoughts are on that. I'll have a poll somewhere. Uh, and then I watched South Park, The Streaming Wars Part 2 uh, on Friday. Um, and, you know, 
the South Park specials have been, oh, pun intended, I'm just going to say it, nothing special. I mean, they're always, like, nice to watch, but the writing hasn't always been um, of the highest quality. It's been, like, classic South Park, which um, I like, but um, this special particularly suffered from that rubber banding of storytelling. Uh, and I know I like to use that term a lot, but specifically here, they have a song and dance number uh, involving Marsh that is just um, completely undone by the end of the uh, special, which, I mean, I guess you kind of have to do since it's a special, and that's kind of been my overall vibe with specials that I feel like they could have more consequences for the larger show. Not that I watched the large, the show itself. I haven't watched it since, well, gosh, 2006. So um, that's how out of the loop I am on some of these things. And But uh, I, nevertheless, I still enjoyed it for what it was. The animation is still great. Uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone are still great at it. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it's just a three out of five for me. It's just middle of the road. It, it, there's just some jokes which I would I skipped through because I was like, I you know I don't want to. Th this joke has been done a million times. I had enough of it, of it in the uh, uh, part one of Streaming Wars. You know, it it just seems to be getting a bit repetitive for um for for these specials, especially since um. There's been so many in the past year. So um, that's TV. Uh, let's get into the two video games. I beat two video games this uh, this past 24 hours. I beat Battlefield Hardline and Toy Story 3, the video game. Uh, yeah, I know those are ancient video games. Uh, one of them less ancient than the other. So let's talk about the less ancient one. Battlefield Hardline, um, I mentioned this in my GG uh, review. Um, on the GG app, um, and, but I wanted to like this game. Uh, Battlefield Hardline was a game I wanted to like. I also own it on PS4, I think. Um, I wanted to like this game. Uh, the concept of a Battlefield game, but, but instead of a soldier, you're a cop, um, was fascinating to me. What would, what would change? How would the form battlefield formula change for being a cop? And the answer is not all that much. Um, you, the most it deviates from things is that you don't um, necessarily want to uh, kill uh, the ba the bad guys. You you get more points for arresting um, uh, enemies than you do uh, killing them because you actually don't get any points for killing uh, enemies. Um, but you get points for, you know, taking them down with a taser or, you know, uh, doing a takedown, uh, which is just getting up behind them and uh, making them go to sleep. Um, but if you shoot them, you don't get any points. Uh, and you have, to, and it's much more stealthy because of that. You, you know, you're not, you're not, you don't have a bazooka. You're not meant to go in there all guns blazing because if you do you'll you don't have the armor that you do in the other battlefield games so with you know you have to outthink your uh enemies which i really liked um however towards the back half of the game uh episodes six through ten especially actually episodes nine through ten especially um it, it really just turns into hey uh, we ran out of ways to make this a cop game, and they, the dice. I I, I guess that's who developed it. Um, very clearly, was were like, hey, but what if we made this more like Battlefield? You know, you, you're in a tank at one point. You're there's sniper perches, um, and there's just scenarios where you can't arrest people. Uh, in fact, I I. Uh, in one mission, I got an achievement for um, shooting somebody as I was swinging through the air in an action sequence. And I didn't 
particularly like that. I mean, it was cool uh, as a set piece kind of thing, but um, that's not what I was coming to Battlefield Hardline for. I was coming to Battlefield Hardline for a different experience, and I got that in the first half, but then it just kind of fell apart, not to mention that the story is uh, very lackluster. Um, I, I mean, Cops does a better job of portraying uh, betrayal and violence. and it, it wanted to be Miami Vice, but uh, I don't think they had the script entirely thought out because there's just things where you just sit there and you're like, wait, what? That, that doesn't make any sense, but... Uh, it, 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 it's, I don't think it's supposed to, though. Um, but speaking of things uh, that also got... Uh, Toy Story 3, the video game. Uh, I don't know if that's the official name. I, it just comes up on my Xbox as Toy Story 3. Um, so I, you may be wondering, why do I want to play Toy Story 3, the video game? Well, I played through through bits of Toy Story 1. I didn't finish that um, game because that is ridiculously difficult. Um, I mostly finished Toy Story 2, the video game, um, on the PS2. Um, I, I just, you know, I, I haven't had the opportunity to go back to it. I know they, um, some people on Twitter have said that it's back up and running on PS4 because of the new PlayStation Plus thing, um, which is interesting. Uh, if I had a PS4 or a PS5, I, I'd, I'd probably check it out, but I don't. So, um, but anyways, so I, I've always been interested in Toy Story 3, and I, particularly when I bought this, Lightyear hadn't come out yet, and I wanted a Lightyear game. Um, so this was kind of to fill the hole of the non-existent Lightyear licensed video game. Uh, because I remembered when I played it back when I rented it from Gamefly, uh, there's a sentence and a half, um, that there was a Buzz uh, video game level. And I wanted to check that out. I finished that. Um, so, Toy Story 3, the video game, is the more complex of the three games. Um, not it, each care you switch, you could switch between Buzz, Jesse, and Woody, um, and each one has their own specific uh, special power or a move. Uh, Woody's is he can throw his um, th voice box string out and um, lasso it and to traverse over big gaps. Uh, Jesse can land on like darts or pressure valves and things like that. Um, I can't remember what Buzz's is. I, I, I don't actually know. Um, but I think it's like he spins around or something. I don't, I don't know. Maybe that, I'm mixing that up with Toy Story 2, the video game. Uh, and that's perfectly fun in the first half, or, or like 80% of the game. But... It has this ridiculous difficulty curve uh, at some points through the game where it's just like, specifically in the final mission uh, where you're facing off against Bonnie um, as Buzz, and it, the Bonnie levels are the most frustrating, actually, um, because they require a lot of platforming, a lot of quick uh, reaction time, none of which I have. Um, and I about destroyed um, my controller a few times. Uh, thankfully, I didn't, uh, but I was this close. Uh, that and the uh, prison break sequence uh, in Sunnyside Daycare were just way too difficult for what they are. Um, but hey, it's on sale right now um, for five bucks. So. If you want a light year video game, you can check it out. Just don't have high, high hopes. Um, also, Battlefield Hardline is on, uh, I believe they call it EA Play. I think it used to be called EA Access. Uh, and then if you're on PC, I think it's called Origin. 
it, it might still be called EA Play. Um, but yeah, you can check those out for relatively cheap, um, which is why I did that. Um, and that brings us to the end of the show. Uh, I apologize if I seem hurried. I've got a lot to record today. Um, I, I, I've got the High School Musical Season 3, uh, Episode 2 uh, commentary to record, uh, along with a bunch of other things. Um, they should be up by, by the ninth episode of the Austin B Media Podcast. Um, and I, But here's what I've posted. Uh, I posted a, if you're on watching this on YouTube, uh, you can, uh, there's the boys season three review, uh, right, uh, right, uh, there, right there, uh, and I also posted, um, the nominees list for the 74th Emmy Award, and speaking of High School Musical Review for the series season three, I posted a write-up of the um, first music video, so go check those out. I'll, I'll uh, link it all in the show notes. So without further ado, this is Austin Belzer signing off to the Austin Media Podcast. Until next time.